5G is basically a highly flexible and constantly evolving innovation platform that nicely integrates many different technological building blocks, wireless connectivity, of course, with very high performance, but it's also edge computing, it's integrated positioning, um, time synchronization, time sensitive networking, and many more. So with that, 5G basically may lead to convergence of different technologies and may become the digital backbone of the digital transformation in these different vertical industries. A new generation always create uh, inflated expectations. New generation 5G is just a start of evolution, not a completed, completed product. No matter who you are or where you live, you need access to modern communications to have a fair shot at 21st century success. Better data, more focus on mid-band spectrum, and more funding are the ticket to making sure that 5G new technologies and broadband reach everyone everywhere. How do you generate the necessary resources that are required uh, to massively uh, deploy uh, the infrastructure that is necessary uh, for this service. So that's a key challenge for, for decision makers, for, for investors, for uh, companies that are operating in our region, uh, as well as affordability of the service itself. We, we still have economies that are fairly, fairly, you know, elastic in terms of, uh, or sensitive in terms of, of, of pricing. Uh, of services or, or terminals. And so any slight increase, uh, you know, uh, would be felt across the board. I think uh, relying on technology to close a gap is, is for me, uh, a tricky issue. I think uh, gaps are dependent on the sort of economic factors that are at play. And so for as long as we have wide uh, income gaps between, for example, in Africa, urban and rural areas, for that reason, you'll find a lot more deployment of these technologies in the rural, in the urban areas. Fixed wireless access um, is one of the tools that enable operators to bring uh, ultra high speed um, uh, broadband to places uh, where fixed broadband is, is not there. And oftentimes in, in some nations, it's some suburban areas or rural areas, but FWA built on the true 5G networks actually lay the groundwork for an entirely new service offering that, um, that you, know, you might require low latency and, and broadband services in that particular environment, like a private network. I believe uh, the technologies are complementary. You know, it's like husband and wife, they can't live without each other. So I think these technologies together, along with other innovations like AI, ML, uh, um, virtualization will have to come into, into an orchestration, come, come together to create an affordable internet. So skipping from 3G to 5G might be one of strategic ways to introduce the latest technology to the market, um, boosting up the domestic market economy. However, in order to build 5G network without 4G, 5G standalone architecture should be introduced. Um, in summary, Leapfrogging from 3G to 5G could be an option to introduce the most advanced wireless communication technology quickly in the market, but it seems to be a bit premature at this moment economically and technically, in particular in low and middle economy income countries. It is crucial to have a strong scientific system that can ensure that 5G provides the benefits without sacrificing health and safety, providing rules that will ensure protection against all adverse health effects. And when I say all, well, in essence, the guidelines are a set of rules that providing they are adhered to, they will ensure that 5G will not cause any harm. So the issue really becomes one of risk communication rather than uh, health mitigation or exposure mitigation. When it comes to network security, the threats are real, the stakes are high, and our defenses need to constantly evolve and improve. And this is especially vital as we transition from next generation networks like 5G, and they're gonna connect so much more in the world around us. Um, we will see extraordinary opportunities from those connections, but we'll also see real vulnerabilities. 
use of big, uh, massive data analytics, machine learning algorithms, very powerful computing infrastructure, maybe some of the key enabling elements. So telecom operators have been leveraging massive data such as traffic information, user location, service destination. So it's very easy to define a use case with 5G. What the only thing that matters is really the business case. That means you would like to have a positive return in the West in a reasonable time span. And also this is something that is not as straightforward as defining a use case. Among all the potential use cases, uh, mobile broadband service is the most popular one in this uh, initial stage. And there is another popular area where 5G is, uh, is considered to give differentiated use. There is a private network use case. Even though we already have had uh, private LT service uh, commercialized in the markets every year ago, 5G is uh, to give more enhanced features and performances to enterprise like more enhanced security or dedicated network resources or network slicing. So regarding this use case, we have 5G coverage in uh, large factory sites like ship manufacturing, harbors, remote islands where 5G enabled telemedicine services provided. <laughs>